Hi guys, it's Mina. Welcome back. We are continuing with our Aphrodite series. I hope you saw our last one, Hephaestus, the weaponsmith of the god. So it's been pretty interesting and pretty fun learning about these and researching all these different gods and all the myths surrounding them. A little shocking, but questionable morals, but very interesting. So the pour we're going to be doing today is Ares, and I will tell you about his connection to Aphrodite when we're spreading out our base coat. But let me start off and show you what my paints are. This is a 24 by 24 inch gallery wrapped canvas from Michaels. Get them when they are on sale. This is the best time. Okay, so, oh, and before we start, I want to show you real quick. This one is Serene Lantern, which is dry now. Beautiful finish on it. Very, very pretty. Very turquoise. So this one is Serene Lantern. You see that beautiful turquoise with the silver. The Pregari silver did this really cool, like, gasoline sort of shift, sh color shifty sort of vibe. And then there's some beautiful cells coming in here, popping up through the, like, straight pour part. I guess that's where I twisted the cup a bit. Lots of gold. This pretty turquoise that's like the, it's kind of a greenish turquoise where it mixed with the gold. Very cool, though. So that one was Serene Lantern. I wanted to show you when it was dry before I forgot. <laughs> Okay, so back to Aries. All right, so we have Quinacridone Crimson from Golden's. There's a C on that one, so you know which one it is. So I know which one it is. Leaving a mound on a mound on a mound. Everything is mixed with Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish and Floetrol. Two ounces of Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish, one ounce of paint, about half an ounce, an ounce, an ounce and a half of water, depending on the paint. Then I mix about 8 to 10 ounces of Floetrol in there as well. So this is a 16 ounce cup. I usually end up with about 12 or 13 ounces of paint. It does leave a trace that goes away after a minute. Mound on a mound on a mound. Okay, so that's the consistency of everything that I'm trying to get to because we are going to do a ring pour today. Um, my copper that I've been using, the Golden's Copper, um, looked a little bright. So I added a little bit of black to it, and it kind of went bronze, but it's a very cool color. I don't want to stir it up too much because I do kind of like those black streaks. This one is a touch thinner, but I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. Still leaving a mound on a mound on a mound, and a trace that disappears. So that's Golden's Copper with a little bit of Artist Loft Black in there. My, oh, <laughs> this is not my DecoArt 24 karat gold. What? <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> this one is Golden's Iridescent Gold. Fine. And it is one of their fluid acrylics. So in order to get it to the point where it leaves a mound on a mound on a mound, I have added a dollop of Elmer's glue all to my mix. So, and now it is leaving a mound on a mound. Not a very big one. So I hope it doesn't get lost, but I'm confident it'll be okay. Especially since we're doing a ring pour. Okay, next one. This one is Golden's Anthroquinone Blue. Beautiful, beautiful color. Love, just, you could get lost in there. Again, mound on a mound on a mound. Not a very big one. And then a uh, trace. So this is more the consistency of the gold. Okay, next one. This one is Golden's Quinacridone Violet. I put a V on the stick so I know which one it is. Okay. Um, it was actually pretty close to the crimson, so I added a little bit of black. <laughs> and actually the funny thing is now it really resembles the permanent deep violet. So it's sort of this journey in color theory of what do you mix with what to get what. So I added black to a color very similar to that and ended up with this. So, But this is the Quinacri um, yeah, Quinacridone Violet from Golden's. Mound on a mound on a mound. Okay. What's next is Pregari Silver, like I used in Hephaestus, which I loved. Um, this time I have added a little bit of my White Bear house paint to this because I really like the effect that I got in those little cloudy bits in Hephaestus was great. So I've just mixed some of the house paint with the silver and then I've had to add a lot of water to it obviously to thin it out. Then I have my Artist Loft Flow Acrylic in black. Mix the same as everything else. Quitex Gloss Medium and Varnish. Slight man, 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 man. Okay, and then I have another cup of that that's just a touch thinner that's for my background. Okay, so let's pour our cup real quick. And then I'm going to tell you the story, which is, <laughs> as my daughter says, the tea is hot. So. <laughs> okay, 
We're going to start with some black. And then what do I want to do? I want to put a little bit of copper in. And then some of that quinacridone crimson. Gold. It may, oh, it may not show up because it's a bit thin. It's a little bit more. Okay. Stop it. Tell the drip. Naughty, naughty. Okay, we're going to put some of this violet in now. Let me see it's thin. Okay. Let's go into the anthraquinone blue. Okay, some of that silver in there. I'm going to go back to the quinacridone crimson. Put some copper. So if you notice, everything is contrast. There's a lot of contrast between all of these layers. Nothing is, like I'm not putting these two together right next to each other. I always put something in between them that makes it more contrasty. Okay? So this is what's going to make your colors show up more, is that contrast. Let's go in with the anthraquinone blue. Can you put copper in? Can you put gold in? I want to put this in. And silver. Okay, so our cup is ready. Now we're gonna lay down our base coat real fast. And then I'm going to tell you the story. <laughs> so you remember Hephaestus that we were talking about. He was the weaponsmith, pretty cool dude, forge, sculptor, stonemason, made all the weapons for the gods, okay? And he kinda got a raw hand a little bit because when he was born, his mother Hera was not real happy. I guess he had a deformity. She actually threw him off the mountain. And he was found by a lovely couple and raised by them, and then he grew up to be a weaponsmith and a forge. And um, he was kind of mad at Hera. So he created this golden throne and sent it to her as a gift. But it wasn't just any old throne. It actually had some very, very fine gossamer strands that actually locked her and restrained her into this golden throne. So she didn't know this, of course, and she got the throne and was kind of happy and was like, wow, and then sat in it and was immediately captured. <laughs> so Zeus, obviously wanting his wife free, you know, says, okay, anybody who can free Hera from this chair um, can marry Aphrodite. Aphrodite's hand in marriage. So, um, all of these people were trying to free Hera and could not. And Dionysus, the god of wine, the happy dude, <laughs> goes to Hephaestus and talks to him and says, hey, you know, nobody can open up this chair you made and uh, marry Aphrodite. Since you built it, maybe you should go free Hera and unlock the chair and then you get Aphrodite as your wife. And so Hephaestus was like, hey, okay, cool. So he did. He went and he freed Hera, and he won Aphrodite's hand in marriage. So she was kind of wed to him against her will. Well, not against her will, but she wasn't real happy about it. Let's put it that way. And, you know, being the goddess of love and beauty and passion, she was not chaste. <laughs> so she had a lot of affairs. And one of those affairs was with Ares who was also the son of Zeus and Hera. So I believe he was Hephaestus' brother. And um, so, yeah, they had this hot and heavy fling going on, and Hephaestus found out or knew about it or I don't know. And so he did something kind of... They're all so tricky, these people. Anyway, he <laughs> created this magical, gossamer, shimmering, super fine net. I guess the same stuff he had done on Hera's chair. And he put it on his marital bed. And then he told Aphrodite he was going out of town and he was leaving for a little while on a trip. So 
she's like, oh, cool. <laughs> and she calls up Aries and says he's going. And they head off into the bedroom and climb into bed and we're uh, enjoying each other. <laughs> and all of a sudden, these gossamer strands that Hephaestus installed, this giant net, captures them. And Hephaestus, who was actually not an idiot, came back, and caught them in the net, and uh, took them to Olympus, where he had them on display for all the gods to point at and laugh at as, you know, an adult proof of an adulterous relationship affair. So Aphrodite kind of got in hot water. She got in trouble for that. And um, so, yeah, that's that's one of the stories that's told about Ares <laughs> in regards to Aphrodite anyway. Um, Ares was actually the god of war and he had a sister, Athena. So Ares is sort of the very volatile, red hot energy of fighting the, the unchecked violence of war, I guess. That sort of very violent energy. And Athena is supposed to be more intelligent and thoughtful and, you know, st strategy. What did you say? She's the, what was it you said? The hammer. He's the hammer and she's the scalpel. <laughs> very good description. So, um, yeah, right now, so today's pour, we're going to be doing a ring pour, and this one is Aphrodite and Aries. So we're going to be doing a ring pour. So last week, I was watching be the beautiful, beautiful Molly from Molly's Artistry doing one of her wrecked ring pours. And I don't know if you guys have seen these, but it's really, really cool. It's kind of neat how it turns out. It's sort of scary, I'm not going to lie. The first time I tried when I chickened out, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't wreck it. <laughs> And uh, I actually have that one on camera, so you guys will see that at some point, probably during the week. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, um, and then the second time I did actually manage to wreck it, and I loved how it came out. So we're going to do that today. So with the colors that I have and how we've layered it, I'm sort of feeling like the, the Aphrodite vibe is sort of these warmer colors. And then the, the Aries, I don't know, it's kind of like the black and the red. I don't know. So... This is sort of a battle and a relationship at the same time, if that makes any sense. <laughs> okay, so we're going to pour this on our canvas. Then we're going to pour a ring of black around it. Hi, Zen! Okay, that's still a bit thick. Bring that up just a touch. And then we will pour. So I want this thinner than that because I want it to be able to slide. That's already probably way more than enough. So, okay, that's better. It's not sinking, not making a mount. All right, let's do this. All right, so we're gonna do a beautiful ring pour and then we're gonna wreck it. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Let's move this out of the way. I'm going to go around this a bit. Black. Ooh. See, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Wreck it. Wreck it. Wreck it. It's so pretty, though. Wreck it. It's going to be really pretty, though. Okay. I'm going to use my stick from my black. We're just going to do like three. You ready? Yep. I'm going to go that way first. Okay.
All right, that's enough. I really like this crimson and the little bit of that bronzy copper with the blue. That's really pretty. Okay, and I love this part, it's gorgeous. I like this, this is very pretty and soft. So it's cool, it's kind of like a female area, male area coming together. Okay, here we go. Let's just sort of see what happens. So it's eating itself just a little bit, but that's okay. Come back to the center again. And we're going to go off that corner. go over there but I don't want to mess up this these lines and stuff so I'm gonna leave it that's pretty cool this is a little straight for me curve in there. Okay. That's pretty cool. I think I'm going to leave that one like that. I like how you can see all the rings. I like how the wrecked part sort of blends and marries the two. I like how this is the more crimson side, it's kind of Aphrodite side, and that side reminds me more of the more masculine, like the Aries feeling. I think it's pretty cool. I like it. It looks like the net those two jerks got caught in. That was the idea. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what I was hoping would happen, and I'm glad that you did. Thank you for pointing that out, darling. So yeah, this sort of reminds me of the net that Aries and Aphrodite got caught in. 
but it's such a colorful, pretty net, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at that real quick because this one turned out really beautiful. There's some very pretty parts in here. I love this separation of the lines and how clear it is with that definition of the red and the blue. And again, the contrast. When you layer your cup with contrast, this is the effect that you get. And this is actually not white. This is that silver color. There is no white in this. So all of this that looks white is, that, well, I guess there was white in the silver, but it's a very silvery white. <laughs> anyway, so this is really cool. I like this part a lot. I love this swirl. These are really pretty cells that are coming up in this wrecked part in here. This is very cool. I like this area with the, the crimson and the violet together. Very pretty. And the copper over here is sort of on top of, and that, that sort of dirty copper, I don't know, throughout this whole series, Aphrodite has been the copper. And I kind of, I felt like after the whole scene where she got caught with Ares, she was sort of a little dirtier, <laughs> a little darker. So we added some black to the copper to darken it up. I think people change, you know? And I could see how an experience like that would definitely darken your character a bit. But she seems to be having a lot of fun with Aries over here, even under this gossamer net. <laughs> I love this. And there's just a very fine silver lacing on top of all of this. That, that violet came out beautiful. I love the anthroquinone blue in there. With the silver and some of that coppery bronze is very, very cool. So this is awesome. They're very neat. I like it. I'm not going to torch it because then we would get a million more cells coming up and I don't really want more than already there. That's very pretty in there. Very flowy. Lots of good movement. So thank you to Molly from Molly's Artistry for your wrecked ring pour idea. That's really fun. It's awesome. I had a lot of fun. I will link her channel up here so you guys can take a look because she's a really, really sweet lady. You should check her out. She's awesome. Anyways, I will see you when this is dry. Thanks for hanging out with me. Dokey. So this is outside in the sun. This one is make love not war. This is Aries and Aphrodite <laughs> having a good time. And the gossamer net that they are caught in that Hephaestus created. So this turned out so pretty though. Look at this golden's gold right here just sparkling and blinging. Oh my gosh. So pretty. Actually all the metallics in this are just amazing. This part up here is so pretty. I love this section. That's just gorgeous to me. The wrecked ring pour. Very, very cool. Thank you, Molly, for coming up with that and playing with it and inspiring us all to play and have a good time. So cool. Look at this part over here. Really trippy, very 3D. And you can see the, the shimmer and the luster on it. This is without even any additional varnish on it. This is just a Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. You see that beautiful, how the metallics are sparkling. It's beautiful sheen on everything and luster. Just beautiful, like these little tiny cells up here. So cool. Focus, focus, yeah. Look how neat that is. I love that. So this one, woo! Hello, wind. Come on, Gail. Calm down. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry, it's very, very windy out here. So that's it for this one. We have one more in our Aphrodite series that's going to be really, really fun. And I think that actually might be my favorite of all of them. Although this one is a pretty close second. I love those lines. So that one is going to be Dionysus. It's coming up next. But uh, thank you all so much for hanging out with us and watching and commenting. I love your comments. I love to hear what you guys think. It's, you guys are so funny. You crack me up. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to see more of my stuff, you can check it out on Facebook, Mina Villegas Art, or you can check out my Etsy shop, which now that I've put everything away for the holidays is actually next on my to-do list. <laughs> if you want to be a patron of the arts, there is a link in the description box for a PayPal me. Thank you for all your very generous donations. I really appreciate it so much. And let's see, if you guys could please check and make sure you've hit the subscribe button and if you, you gotta click on all notifications, otherwise it won't actually tell you when I've uploaded a video. So I would appreciate it if you could check on that. And, uh, oh, playlists. I've started to um, add some playlists. Molly was so sweet and so kind and she was telling me 
about playlists and <laughs> help me figure it out. So now there are fun playlists for you to watch. Go check out the one with the big canvases. And I've tried to organize them by size, like 12 by 12s and 20 by 20s. And so, but there's going to be some other stuff in there too. So if there's a list that only has a couple, it's just because I haven't finished it yet. So, but go check those out. It should be a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you for the next one. Have a great day.